What is up, Woodsters? Today we're going to be taking a look at a Walmart only exclusive, the Hoth Combo Pack. Now, I know both of these sets aren't exactly new, but I actually don't have either of them, so I'm super excited to take a look at them and do a big old comparison. The total piece count for both sets is 691, rated for ages 9 plus, has seven minifigures and one droid, and is only at Walmart. The back of the box has both sets displayed, as well as their appropriate age ranges and piece counts. Inside this box is the ATST box, which is absolutely no different than before. And with our logistics out of the way, here are these two sets we're going to be comparing today. Hey, that rhymed. The OG ATST is set number 7127 and is very old. And when it was released, was rated for ages 7 to 12. So if you're older than 12, get out of here. Just kidding. Please subscribe. But with the battle pack out of the way, we can focus on these two ATSTs. Who's going to win? The nostalgia of the OG one or the design of the new one? Only time will tell. But that new one looks pretty nice though. The OG ATST has a very small frame. It's tiny, but it does fit the regular frame of an ATST, so it doesn't look too bad. The legs are thin enough to represent an ATST itself, and it fits Chewbacca on top, which is nice too. Getting him out of the way though, and focusing on the build itself, you can see just how much the new one towers over the old one. And it even shoots lasers at it too. It doesn't have enough power to actually hit it over, but you know, brute force. That's better. So watch yourself. He's coming for you. We'll start ourselves at the feet of the OG ATST, which are very blocky, but they don't look too bad. There are very few pieces used on these, and they connect with the legs with just those hinges. That's it. That also allows us to move them pretty far down, which is nice. And I also think it's good to have the feet sort of disconnected from the actual legs. Now, of course, an ATST never really does this, but you can pose it as it's like falling down, or you can have it strutting its stuff on the runway, or you could even just have it playing soccer. One nice thing about all these hinges is that you really do have a lot of access to every range of motion, but the feet itself look good. I can count how many pieces there are on my hand on each foot, but overall, I think they did a good job at making sure they represent the ATST well, and they hold up the model, which is the most important part. Bending it is pretty simple too, but they are sturdy and they don't move unless you really want them to. And you can move the top as well. So both of those hinges can change, but if you just move the top, it will fall over. The top of the legs are connected to each other through Technic rods. Don't worry, that tan piece is supposed to be there. Because the legs are connected, it does look a little bit inaccurate, but it allows us to walk the ATST around just like it would in universe, swaying back and forth just like it does. In our newer model, the legs are made for design first and foremost. These are not really legs that you can move or even play with much at all. Don't get me wrong, they look fantastic. I mean, these feet use a ton of pieces to make it look exactly like it does in universe, whether that's Endor, Hoth, or even the Mandalorian. Some really good part uses like George bodies and weird arms to kind of make the feet look more mechanical yet smooth however these feet are built to be more sturdy than the other ones and so they will not move at all which could create problems for us later but they're connected through that red piece there which makes it completely sturdy and then you put these pieces on top just to make sure that it literally can't go anywhere, which makes for a great building experience because you don't have to move the feet around while you're building and then it ultimately makes the legs look really good but then we get to a problem. How do you actually move the thing? How could you really play with it? And it's with the hinges on top. The only thing is the hinges on top, they ain't too stable. And this thing's gonna fall over every time you move it. My biggest complaint about these hinges, they look really good. They're made for style, but for a nine plus set, I feel like they should be made geared toward more play or at least usability. But if you move this thing in any sort of direction at all, it will just falter it wants to fall over after the first click but if i'm not holding these feet it will just fall right over and you can bend it all the way back and do like a back handspring but not really necessary there and pointless worst part is is if you want to display this walking it's very difficult it took me a long time to get this to stand up and even now it's still shaking but even then like it just doesn't want to stay up even as you move those two it's still shaky and if i bend one back it likes to stay bent you can see the leg here is crooked which is going to stress the pieces over time and end up probably breaking and i put it back 
it falls over. But look at the legs. I mean, they look really good, but this rod is like here for no reason. It's made very much for form over function, which isn't necessarily bad. I mean, look at the back. They're fantastic and they're super thin, just like the ATST should be. Just think this set shouldn't have been marketed as nine plus, cause it just isn't. This is a set made for an older crowd, which is fine, but they should say that. But looking at the actual ATST, man, they did such a good job at just making this look like an ATST. I could put this in Endor or I could bring it to Hoth. Either way, they did a fantastic job with the look of it. I'm glad that Lego went the route they did, but it doesn't leave this set without its flaws. However, looking back over at the old one, we can see just how much better the new design is. I couldn't tell if this was Squidward's house or if this was an ATST. They are so similar, it's crazy how much this ATST looks like Squidward's house. That being said, they use some great parts here to make it look like an ATST, the best that LEGO could way back when, which I think ultimately paid it off in their favor because this ATST is now iconic, used in the LEGO Star Wars Original Saga game. It's such a good ATST just because of the nostalgia, even though it may not look super accurate. I mean, it's accurate to Squidward's house, of course. They did do a really good job on the sides. Putting those dishes on there helps a lot with rounding the face out just slightly. And it's a great part usage, which allows them to put those like sensors, guns, I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be, on the sides of the ATST. On the other side, I'm pretty sure that's a sensor. The only problem is that it does spin around 360. So sometimes if you're moving it, it will move, but it looks really good for what they had. Speaking of really good, I love that they didn't use any stickers on this ATST. Not a single one, which gives us really cool prints that we can use in other builds. One problem I do have though, these prints are great, but then we have a print for the actual cockpit, which doesn't make sense. Yet that because the set is smaller, they had to use this specific piece to open, but now we just have a dome that doesn't really open, and then the entire back opens to fit a minifigure. So you can throw your Chewy in there and close it up easier, I suppose. But you can see from this side how that kind of just makes it look a little awkward, especially since you have to have that square flap up if you want to put a figure in. But the inside looks fine too if you like seeing red and yellows. Don't know why they use those colors specifically. On the other side of looks though, this ATST looks like an ATST. Even if it was made for those hooded eyes to necessarily be open like they are in Endor, it probably still wouldn't look like Squidward's house. So that could be seen as a positive if you hate Squidward. Now, one awesome thing they did here with the new one is the Griebling. I noticed when I was putting this on that it was kind of in a weird spot, but it actually is perfect for displaying what the ATSD is supposed to look like. They did a really good job with this one and they even added four studs on the side. You may be wondering though, what does that knob do? And this actually turns up the head so we can spin the whole thing 360 degrees. It is a really great play feature, but I think kind of complicated for nine plus. Again, another reason why I think the age rating here is slightly off. Looking at the head though, they did a fantastic job with the guns, lasers, whatever on the sides. They look so good and just amazingly accurate. Very good part usage here. And they even use a wheel to represent this sensor. It turns out perfectly. And then on the back, we get more printed tiles. Woo! These ones have a hole in the middle, which is fun, but I'm also really glad that they printed these and didn't make me put on a circular sticker. This also shows us some of the issues with the set mainly the gaps that you can see at the top and on the sides. Because of the angular shape of the ATST, we do get gaps both on the back and on the front that end up looking not super great. This isn't a deal breaker of the set for me, but I think they could have done a better job at minimizing these gaps. And especially when the box still really have the ATST turned slightly to the side so you can't see the gaps. To me, I think it's obvious. They knew this was a problem and decided not to fix it. Another issue I have on the back is those two buttons for the spring-loaded shooters. They're just kind of intrusive on the bottom. I really do love the top of the ATST though. It looks fantastic and it's completely brick built too. And of course, you can open up the entire thing so you can throw some minifigures in there like your ATST driver or even Chewy. My favorite part though is that you can open the entire hood or just the cockpit so you can have him peeking out a little bit. The cockpit itself looks really good, but it's just a control panel. Everything else is basically the same. Some colors in there I wish we didn't see, but that's just the Technic inside. Overall, looking at the price it is to get one of these versus the original one, I would definitely buy this one any day. 
they did a much better job at designing it and the age of the old one really shows. But the most important part of the set is the figures. With figures on the newer one, we have three versus on the OG, we have just our lone Chewbacca. Of course, with the new one too, we have the droid, but I'm not going to be putting that one in this list because it's not a minifigure as cool as it may be. So we'll jump into the three minifigures first. The selection of the set I think is pretty good. You get kind of the battle of both the ATST driver and the Hoth Trooper, and you get Chewie with snow printing, which is something that's going to be exclusive to the set probably forever. The ATST driver is phenomenal. He looks really good in that helmet, as well as the printing on his torso and legs matches up very nicely. He has no arm printing, but that's not too big of a deal because the back printing is great too. Under his beautiful dome, he also has a second Imperial face, which is kind of a smirk, which makes me feel like the command post is now under Imperial control. A command post is no longer under Empire control. Anyway, let's get his bald head covered up with that beautiful dome once again. On the other side, we've got this Rebel Trooper. She's rocking binoculars and a nice blaster. No leg printing though, and no printing on the arms either, but we do have a nice backpack on her back which is a fantastic inclusion and underneath her helmet hood thing she has a second face too the second face can't really see here so let's get that backpack off and there's her second face another smiley one too she does have back printing as well and as i turn this to the side i realized how uncanny it is to see the back face and the front face at the same time it goes really going all out here giving you the option to reenact your two-faced ex-girlfriend cheating on you with the darth vader kit and to round off the minifigures we've got our two chewies our classic and our new style chewy something i hadn't realized until now is that the chewy mold is completely different than it used to be it's a little bit taller, slightly bulkier, and somewhat more uncanny. Those whites for the eyes and the teeth on Chewie just make him look a little strange to me. Not that it's necessarily bad, but I think the old one just did a better job of representing Chewie in Lego. That said, our new style Chewie is one that you'll probably never see again. With the snow-covered Chewie that has white speckles all over the place and specks on his feet. He has no arm printing, but Lego really went the extra mile to make sure that he looked thick just like your mom and the back bandolier print as well as the speckles still look good too one thing you'll notice is that on the bandolier with chewy now the angle is slightly different than the old version taking it all off he's just completely brown but much darker than the original whereas on our original guy he is a very lightish brown and you can see the bandolier goes more towards his waist rather than his butt this chewy is a little more soulless however i do appreciate that it is nostalgic I will say yes, there is no soul in this chewy, and he is slightly less thick than the other one. I wouldn't expect any arm printing here, but on the back you can see the bandolier just has a better shape to it, and ultimately goes through his side, rather than going down on his butt. That said, the atrocity of the old one is that it didn't come with a weapon at all. Chewie has no bowcaster in the original ATST set. In this one, he comes with the stud shooter version, which I don't love, but at least it's something. I get that Chewie's supposed to be in the ATST cabin in Endor, but still, he needs his bowcaster. I'm glad they included it with the Hoth one. I think it looks decent enough. In the end, the OG ATST really shows its age. It's almost like these are two different vehicles entirely. The reality is, I think they both have their charm in their own way. But if you're going to go out and spend $50 to get the OG one, you're probably spending too much money on the wrong thing. While the Hoth ATST isn't perfect, you can get that thing sealed for way less, and it is way more. You get more detail, you get a better display piece, and while it may not be as great for play as the OG one, it just makes sense to get this entire set together with your Snow Trooper Battle Pack to create the ultimate battle experience, and this is such a great Christmas gift, because really, you get two sets in one that fit very well together. Much better than some stupid mechs. So thanks for watching, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.